News at noon starts right now. And right now, families of Uvalde victims and survivors holding a press conference with state Democrats. They are addressing gun violence in Texas and they are demanding change. The group of parents and Texas Democrats say Republican lawmakers have failed to address the gun policies that allowed the May 24 massacre at Robb Elementary School to happen. That one shooting claimed the lives of 19 students and two teachers. You can go to KSAT.com to watch the live stream as parents take the podium to speak. And happening right now, candidates for Bear County Judge are on stage. They are taking questions about their qualifications for the job. It'll be the first time former County Commissioner Trish DeBerry and Judge Peter Sakai face off since DeBerry's accusations of dark money political ads. As you can see, we are live streaming that event right now. You can watch it on KSAT.com. The ad in question was paid for by a group calling itself Friends of Bear County LLC. DeBerry called that group a dark money corporation that was formed in Delaware. She says claims she has claimed that, quote, multiple sources say Bob Wills of the advertising agency, the PM Group, and one of his clients, personal injury attorney Thomas J. Hendry, are behind those ads. Will said he was supporting Sakai, but he denied any connection to Friends of Bear County LLC. Earlier this week, Sakai's campaign manager said in a statement, quote, as a judge for 26 years and a firm believer in the rule of law, it is critical to have concrete evidence when making an allegation, end quote. A family recovering from what turned out to be a violent eviction. San Antonio police say it ended with a woman being shot and a teenage boy tied up with tape. Katrina Weber has a story from the scene on Fuente Alley and tells us the suspect was an unwelcomed house guest. According to police, this all stemmed from the suspect being told to go to leave the home of his girlfriend's family, but he allegedly said no in an especially violent way. Officers arrived at the home on Fuente Alley near I-10 at South Walters around 930 last night. They found a 46 year old woman with gunshot wounds in her stomach and hand and a 17 year old boy whose arms had been bound with duct tape. Police say the teen told them that a man who had been staying in their home turned on them after the woman ordered him to move out. Officers at the scene told us that 29-year-old man is the boyfriend of the woman's daughter. That teen told police the man tied him up and put him in a backyard storage shed, then shot the woman with a rifle. She was taken to a hospital for treatment. The suspect ran out through the back door before police arrived. They searched but did not find him right away. While the suspect may have worn out his welcome here, it seems that he could eventually find a new home at the Bear County Jail. Reporting from the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A man left for dead in an abandoned apartment complex more than a month ago, and this noon police are no closer to finding his killer. This is the victim, 29-year-old Andrew Aguilar. Officers found his body in the 5300 block of Northwest Loop 410 back on August 27th. He had been shot several times and died at the scene. Right now, police tell us they don't have any suspects. Call Crime Stoppers if you have any information. That number, 210-224-STOP. Tension continues to build at the sentencing of convicted ex-constable Michelle Barrientes Vela. Her former right-hand man, Captain Mark D. Garcia, has flipped and will now testify against her. Garcia sworn in as a witness this morning after what prosecutors described as hours of discussions between them and Garcia that went late into the night. By testifying against his former boss, Garcia could avoid going to trial for felony perjury next month. He may be called to the stand as early as this afternoon. But against his Vela faces up to 10 years in prison after being convicted of tampering with records. The former public official who left office three years ago has applied for probation. We'd like to remind you about our latest KSAT community event. It is tomorrow. KSAT's Courtney Friedman is moderating a town hall on domestic violence. It starts at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You can find more information on KSAT.com. Another KSAT community event is happening on Saturday. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society will be hosting the annual Light the Night event. It's an evening walk with lanterns that pays tribute to patients, survivors, and those who lost their lives to blood cancers. If you want to take part in Light the Night, it's going to be on Saturday beginning at 6 p.m. at Hemisphere. You can scan the QR code on your screen and join our team. 
A local student's love for math led her to start a nonprofit that is helping bring science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM, education to underserved communities. Tiffany Huertas has a look at how she hopes to help more students thanks to a national award that she recently won. It was just so, like, surprising to me, and, I mean, it's $10,000. 16-year-old Hannah Guan was named winner of the 2022 Gloria Barron Prize for Young Heroes. It's an award honoring young leaders who are making a big impact. The senior at Basis San Antonio, Chavano, won $10,000. I'm planning to use it um, to, you know, further fund my organization. At the age of 11, Hannah launched San Antonio Math Include with a mission to provide greater access to STEM education to all students. The nonprofit provides free online math classes and camps. We have our school year program, which are live around 40 minute um, lessons provided by our tutors. Um, directly to our students. San Antonio Math Include also has a YouTube page with math tutorials. I a lot of the time work hands on with these students and so you know to be able to see you know the fire in their eyes really that the passion that they have for learning I think it's just so marvelous that they're able to do all of this here in San Antonio. Hannah says about 30,000 students are using the nonprofit's online courses and the students live not only in San Antonio but in other countries. A lot of our students are from Mexico. Um, there's also a population from India and Canada. Her dream school is Massachusetts Institute of Technology and wants to study math. She hopes to continue bringing opportunities to other students. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Today is World Teachers Day, and in honor of local educators, the San Antonio Zoo is offering a discount. The zoo says teachers can get 50% off any date. And we've had uh, sunny skies for most of today. We'll see clouds move back in tomorrow. Does that mean a chance for rain? We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott still can't grip a ball, so it looks like Cooper Rush still has a grip on the starting job. Larry Mears has comments from Jerry Jones in sports. It may look a lot like candy, but the consequences of eating rainball fentanyl, and that's what this is, could be deadly. With Halloween approaching, federal authorities are warning parents about the illegal drug. And ABC's M. Wynn tells us that officials fear the drug is spreading rapidly across the country. Federal agents with an urgent warning to parents about potentially deadly fentanyl pills that look just like candy. Dubbed rainbow fentanyl, authorities are calling it a newly packaged poison as Halloween is around the corner. This is every parent's worst nightmare, especially approaching. In New York City, agents seized 15,000 multicolored fentanyl pills hidden inside this yellow Lego box found inside a car that crossed state lines. Law enforcement saying rainbow fentanyl started showing up on the West Coast in February, making its way across the country with high-profile seizures in at least 20 states. Fentanyl is everywhere and it is in everything. Health experts emphasize that the rainbow-colored fentanyl is just as dangerous which led to tens of thousands of deaths and overdoses last year. The DEA is cracking down on Mexican drug cartels, which they say are trying to market these rainbow pills to younger people. This is treacherous deception to market rainbow fentanyl like candy. Dramatic body camera video from Las Vegas police shows officers responding to a call in August. What drugs did they take? Where officials say they administered Narcan, saving the lives of three people. According to the CDC, fentanyl is up to 100 times stronger than morphine, and experts say it's being added to other pills that may look like prescription drugs being sold on the streets. Laura Brinker and Matt White in San Diego lost their son to fentanyl poisoning. The teen thought he was taking Percocet. There was one not pill. a dozen pills in a bag. It was one pill that was taken. Hawaii and Los Angeles are considering putting Narcan in every public school to combat what officials are calling a nationwide drug crisis. M1, ABC News, Washington. Live look outside with live cam. A gorgeous day out there, 82 degrees and still no rain. Still no rain. We did get down to 60, though, this morning, so that was pretty awesome. 
Uh, but rain staying out of the forecast for now. And the aquifer is really suffering as a result. It's down three tenths of a foot to 630.4. We're closing in on 620s, which is not good territory. As far as pollen count is concerned, ragweed did fall off. It's in the low category. It's at 60. Molds are low at 280. We'll take a look at some of the rainfall disparity and maybe a few sprinkles as we get into uh, Friday and Saturday. We'll take a look at the forecast coming up. We had the uh, tribute question on KSET News Now, and it was how long, how many days has it been since we've had an inch or more of rain at the airport? March. And I'm guessing. Was, if, what, what were the choices? Uh, it was like 20, 40. I don't remember what. 42, 60, and 73, and then some shorter day. But yeah. it was 42 days. Yeah, August. Aug August. August. Yeah, okay. August. Oh, that was like a freak storm too, because well, it, it was the only one since <laughs> March. Yeah, it did bring us some good rain, and, and David got the answer right, by the way. So congratulations. Uh, yeah. Good work. Uh, it has been such a dry year, and we've been talking about it. It feels like every day this week, uh, but things are just really kind of getting worse here as we go forward. I want to show you a graph. This this really kind of lays it out there too. This shows the rainfall at the airport over the last 11 months, and you got to go all the way back to October of last year to where we were above average during a month. So uh, November, below average. December, below average. January, below average. February, just a little bit below average. But months like May and June, we were well below the monthly average when it comes to rainfall. And all of this is adding up, and this equals a big-time, long-term drought. And we're still well within its grips and, and as we go forward it, it may get a little bit worse before it gets better so just a heads up uh you know we talk about this a lot but the departure from normal when it comes to rainfall for the year we are 16.8 inches below the average when we're talking yearly rainfall and that's the worst in the state so waco is about 15.1 inches below average houston 8.5 9.2 at san angelo but we really have been hit the hardest i'd say by this drought and that is uh, really up and down the I-35 corridor here. It's kind of the hardest hit area in Texas. And one thing we have to be concerned about too, and I, I mentioned this before during the summer, if we start getting some fronts through here, we get gusty winds, these dry conditions are in place. We gotta start thinking about wildfires too. Not an issue anytime soon. I'm not saying that is uh, going to, to be a problem coming up, but just something that we have to look out for. The time lapse, shows a beautiful sunrise. It was a gorgeous start to our day, 60 degrees this morning, and you can see some of those clouds trying to creep up here. So we're gonna see a few more clouds bubbling up, I think, by the afternoon, but still a mostly sunny day, 81 degrees at the airport, calm winds. There are some uh, thicker clouds as you go south and west of town, maybe even a few showers out in Mexico, but nothing here. And those clouds that we're seeing on the time lapse right there starting to work south to north into Bear County. So a mostly sunny afternoon, I think, is what we can expect. 83 in Rio Medina, 79 Bernie State, 78 Canyon Lake. You're at 83 in New Braunfels. Dew points are creeping up a little bit, too. These numbers are in the mid-50s, which isn't bad. We're still in the pleasant category, but they are higher than they've been really last. Forecast 88 degrees by 3 o'clock. By this afternoon, we're up around 89 for a high. Clear skies 85 at 7 p.m. and down into the 70s by 9 and 10 o'clock. As uh, we look at the big picture here across Texas, we've got some rain in places like Amarillo and Lubbock, so they're actually getting a little bit of rain. There's an upper level low out west, but it just doesn't make it any further east than what you're seeing here. And you can see the good rain there around Amarillo and Lubbock. Be nice if we could have some of that here. It's just, the, the, again, the system's just too far to the west. And we can see it here spinning, actually backs to the west a little bit. It is going to throw some clouds in our direction. We'll get some of that Pacific moisture, but it's upper level moisture, and it doesn't really give us much in the way of rain. There is about a 10% chance of a shower on Friday, maybe a few sprinkles. That's it. This is not going to be important rain. And uh, really, it just results in more clouds Friday. 87 does bring temperatures down a little bit. Otherwise, we're close to 90 on Saturday and Sunday and next week. Uh, partly cloudy this weekend. If you're looking way down the line, there could be some changes late next week, but we've still got a while to go, looks like, before we get any good rain in here, guys. Just unbelievable. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm.
So the Spurs have yet to start their season, and we're already talking about a guy they might want next season. This would be a fantastic season for the Spurs to end up getting the number one <laughs> draft pick. Ooh. That's right, because of Victor Wimbanyama. I'm telling you what, he's seven foot five. He can shoot the three. He can handle the ball like a point guard. R.C. Buford and Brian Wright watched him last night in person, plus in the NFL. How about this? Cooper Rush has more wins this season than Tom Brady coming up. Henderson using the screen. Blocked by Wimbanyama, his second block already. Oh, get used to hearing the name Victor Wimbanyama because the Spurs would love to draft him in big board sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It doesn't appear that Dak Prescott will be returning as the Dallas Cowboys starting quarterback when they travel to L.A. to take on the Rams this week. At this time, it will be Cooper Rush's fourth straight start this season, where so far he's been 3-0 and 4-0 in his starts dating back to last year, which is a first in Cowboys history. Dak's condition updated yesterday during Jerry Jones' weekly appearance on his radio show in Dallas when he was asked if Dak can grip the ball following surgery on his thumb. Uh, no, not well enough to uh, uh, play. Just get into the weekly routine. I, I think it's as simple as that. I mean, he's he'll get there. Uh, when he gets there, he gets there. And so, yeah, not worried. Rush is 3-0 this season as the Cowboys starting quarterback. Yesterday, a member of the media said to Mike McCarthy, if he had told him a month ago that Rush would have more wins through week four than Tom Brady, Lamar Jackson, and Justin Herbert, what would he say? You wasted your time on a lot of unnecessary research. Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. But, yeah, I, I, I just think it's a, you know tribute to, to Cooper and the guys have just you know you see it every year. Uh, you see it every week. You know someone has to step up. You know we had Jordan Lewis go down in pregame. So uh, and, and you know, Duran goes right in there and, and plays on short notice. So you have to have it. You can't win with at it and uh, I think it's awesome you know it, personally I think it's it's really cool for Cooper because you to see him to have this kind of success and you know for as long as he's been in the league and you know it's you know not everybody gets their opportunity right away he's had to wait for his and and he's definitely delivered Cooper Rush will put his perfect record on the line Sunday at the LA Rams all right the Houston Texans should be worried about the performance of their quarterback Davis Mills who has yet to lead them to a victory this season head coach Levy Smith was asked point blank if there have been any discussions about making a change at quarterback we're not making a change at the quarterback position the things we've talked about is with Davis leading us and whatever Davis and everyone coaches what we all need to do better at did I just tell you we're in the fourth quarter with, you know, who our quarterback was that led us in position to take the league there at the end? Davis Mills, he's our quarterback. Texans will face the Jaguars in Jacksonville this Sunday at noon. The Texans are seven and a half point underdogs. The NBA is in love with French basketball star Victor Wimbanyama, who put on a show last night in Henderson, Nevada, with 37 points, four rebounds, five block shots, and seven made three-pointers on 11 tries. He went 11 for 20 overall from the floor. His pro squad from France lost to the G League Unite 122 to 115, but the uncanny seven-foot-five center showed why he's the projected number one NBA draft pick. Great experience, great experience. Uh, I'm, I can't wait to, to do it again. I know I'm doing it again in two days and probably for the rest of my life, so I got time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. He needs to get some more rebounds, though, at seven foot. <laughs> Come on, dude. Okay, get David. Mr. Naysayer over here. Way to go. <laughs> All those threes and no rebounds. Come on. You're seven foot something. What is he? Seven what? Seven five. Seven five? Yeah. He's working on it. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. President Biden touring the devastation here in Fort Myers, Florida today in the wake of Hurricane Ian. I'm Rena Roy and I'll have more coming up. New today at five, meteorologist Adam Kasky now in one of the hardest hit regions of Florida after Hurricane Ian swept through. He's been checking in throughout the week. I don't have the best service, but uh, I think I'm able to get a signal right now. Verizon put up some temporary towers. I'm down here in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, yeah, we made it. This is a personal journey he made to help some of his family members dealing with the devastation in Florida. Uh, look at what Ian left behind inside their home. It's Today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight.
We want to take you to the cleanup in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. This comes as search and rescue operations continue there. However, people in Florida are lifting each other up. ABC's Rena Roy tells us the community is coming together to help those who now find themselves homeless. One week after Hurricane Ian made landfall, thousands still without basic essentials. You're without AC, no lights, no nothing. In Fort Myers, this distribution site organized by the nonprofit Global Empowerment Mission, hundreds like this pregnant mother waiting for water and food. Basically, we have to find ways to cook. Um, some of us are burning wood. I mean, life is hard. And all we can do is just get back up and try to make the best of it. A growing humanitarian crisis in the region. So many relying on makeshift shelters like this arena turned into a temporary home by the Red Cross. It's a lot. It's a big change. Um, but we can't be anything but grateful. The death toll continuing to go up with search and rescue missions still underway. We can rebuild a home. We can get another boat. But when you lose a loved one, there's just no words that can describe how we feel for that family. President Biden visiting the area today to tour the devastation and meet with those affected. As search and rescue teams continue working around the clock, the Red Cross says that they are ready to house even more people if needed. Rena Roy, ABC News, Fort Myers, Florida. Pretty scary over there in Florida. We're going to get a report from Adam Kasky at 5 o'clock tonight. Meantime here, we're hoping the tropics bring us some rain. That would be nice. Uh, th there is a system down moving into the Caribbean, but it looks like it's going to stay well south of us. And by the way, Adam's reports have been uh, pretty incredible. The, pretty incredible to see just all the damage here, so make sure you tune in tonight at uh, 5 o'clock. All right, let's lighten the mood a little bit here. I want to show you another picture on our KSI Connect. Uh, you know, we get these in every day. Skywatcher, who does a terrific job. But this is today's setup with the skeletons. Uh, they're camping. They're camping today. And here's the, uh, here's the pun. What do camping skeletons cook over a campfire? What do camping skeletons <laughs> cook over don't a read campfire? The answer. Oh, I don't see that. I can't see it from it's here. more bones. Oh, uh, that's cute. I like not that. bad, right? I like that bad family. Man, they, they do so well with this. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, getting us in the Halloween mood here as we get a little bit closer. Thank you so much for sending that in. And, you know, you got to be, you know, around a campfire, perhaps in the morning with temperatures. Well, it's not that cold, but down to 60 this morning here in town. 52 Bernie Stage, 51 Kerrville, 56 in Hondo, 56 in Uvalde. It was a great start to the day. But with the dry air in place, you see those big rebounds and temperatures, and that's where we're going to end up this afternoon. So 88 degrees at 3 o'clock, 89 by 4 p.m. Sunny skies, 89 are our high temperature, and then 85 by 7 o'clock. Evening looks great yet again. We're going to do this all again tomorrow. There is one change, though. We'll get some more clouds coming in uh, Friday and maybe over the weekend as well. We'll look at that forecast, and we will update you on the tropics. New tropical depression out there. The latest on that in just a few minutes. Thank, Thank you. you, Justin. Now to the topic of e-cigarettes. ABC's Jay O'Brien takes a look at a new study that finds not only can they negatively affect your overall well-being, but also your sexual health. Contrary to popular belief, e-cigarettes may not be better than traditional cigarettes, especially when it comes to men's sexual health, according to a new study. Researchers from New York University analyzed data from more than 10,000 e-cigarette users and found they were more likely to experience erectile dysfunction compared to non-smokers. Researchers had previously unveiled a link between e-cigarettes and heart disease. The NYU study also notes the increased risk of erectile dysfunction associated with e-cigarettes is independent of heart disease. E-cigarettes may not only be bad for your heart, but also your sex life. With this Medical Minute, I'm Jay O'Brien with ABC News. The two most recommended to get before full fall gets into full swing an updated COVID-19 booster shot and a flu shot. Got mine this morning. That's because the flu season ex is expected to be much more severe this year. Dr. Barbara Bauer with the Ohio State Wexner Medical Center says you can make the process of getting all those shots easier by stacking your vaccines. Really, there's no data to show that if you get them all on the same day, that's going to make you feel worse or, you know, it's going to cause you more side effects because you got two or three shots instead of just one. Health experts say it's also important to make sure that you're up to date on other routine vaccinations as well. Bauer recommends people get their vaccinations starting right now, but no later than the first week of November.
Speaking of vaccinations, COVID-19 boosters could prevent about 90,000 U.S. deaths this winter, but only if more people get them. That is according to a new study published by the Commonwealth Fund. Researchers found if 80% were to get a booster, it would also prevent more than 936,000 hospitalizations and $56 billion in medical costs in the next six months. But if boosters remain at their current pace, researchers say a potential winter surge could bring a peak of about 16,000 hospitalizations and 1,200 deaths per day by March. Around two-thirds of the U.S. population is fully vaccinated and about a third have received a booster. The FBI assuring us that extensive safeguards will be in place for the midterm elections. It says any efforts by hackers to breach election infrastructure are, quote, unlikely to result in large scale disruptions or prevent voting, unquote. That advisory issued just five weeks ahead of the November elections. The FBI wants to combat claims that U.S. elections have been manipulated through hacking, which were proliferated after Donald Trump's 2020 electoral defeat. One of the most famous brands of canned pressed meat. It's seeing record sales, and it's thanks to some newfound popularity. You remember Spam, don't you, David? Mm -hmm. How social really? media is making Spam cool again. Never thought it would make a comeback, but it has. Big time high school volleyball matchup. Harlan and Warren highlights coming up in sports. Anyone who's been waiting for the right time to buy a new car should probably keep on waiting. Why it's not a good time to make that big purchase. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. Ford says their sales in the third quarter increased by 16% compared to 2021. The Detroit automaker, which reports sales monthly, said electric vehicle sales tripled in September, driven by demand for the Mustang Mach-E and the F-150 Lightning pickup. Meanwhile, California company Spin Launch is developing a giant catapult called a suborbital accelerator that to send satellites and other payloads into orbit. Now, in a recent test, they hurled a NASA payload 25,000 feet into the sky. Eventual goal is 200,000 feet. Spin Launch says the tech Technology could make satellites cheaper to launch and save on fuel. And Elon Musk has made a sharp U-turn and is now proposing to buy Twitter for his original offer price of $54.20 a share. Shares of Twitter shot up more than 21% on the news. Now, he made the proposal in a letter to Twitter on Monday. Musk agreed to the deal earlier in the year, then tried to back out. Twitter sued Musk to force him to go through with the purchase. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. The Alliance of Oil Exporting Countries, OPEC, has decided to sharply cut production to support sagging oil prices. And this could mean another blow to the global economy and raise prices at the pump here in the U.S. Energy ministers meeting at the Vienna headquarters of the OPEC oil cartel cut production by 2 million barrels per day. This has been their first face-to-face -face meeting since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. And if you are waiting for a better time to buy a car, you may have to keep waiting for a little while longer. Continued auto parts shortages are driving average car prices higher and higher and higher. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes are making it more and more expensive to finance a vehicle. Plus, car companies and dealers are having less incentive to take steps to bring down their costs because demand is still vastly greater than their supply. According to Edmunds.com, the average new car loan interest rate hit 5.7% in the third quarter of 2022. That's the highest it's been since 2019. The average monthly payment in the third quarter, about $700 compared to 630 this time last year. The average down payment was almost $1,000 less than as well. Um, the analysts don't expect the car market to return to normal anytime soon. Meantime, U.S. home prices are falling. According to new data from analytics company Black Knight, July and August saw the largest single month price decline since January of 2009. This comes as inventory has stalled. Potential sellers aren't putting their houses on the market. And Black Knight says they might be waiting to see if demand and prices kick back up. Potential home buyers are also holding off as interest rates rise. Right now, the market has 600,000 less listings than it did pre-pandemic. 
Oh, spam seeing record sales for the eighth straight year. Hormel says it can't make spam fast enough and it's boosting production capacity. Part of the reason for its recent popularity, it's a trending ingredient on TikTok and on menus at fine dining restaurants in some cities. And in 2019, it jumped on the pumpkin spice bandwagon with a limited edition flavor selling out in minutes. <laughs> let's, let's Pardon begin. me. What is our pollen count today? Is <laughs> that ragweed? Yeah. Uh, what is spam made of? Okay, so you're too young to remember spam, but David and I remember it. And mm -hmm. actually, it's, it dated all the way back to World War II, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't it a? Yeah, it was uh, it a was canned a, meat. Yes. Canned meat. Canned meat. And it, when everything was being rationed, it was a pretty popular item. There you go. Popular again. Everything comes back around, right? Uh, 81 degrees so far today. 60 was the low this morning, so uh, we're already up about 21 degrees or so. Uh, the record is 95, set back in 1893. We won't get there today. In fact, we'll be uh, right at average, maybe a little bit above. Some more nice weather as we head into the weekend, but a bit more cloud cover too. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. When honoring your loved one, don't forget the salt. When a spirit makes its journey back to the world of the living, it's believed salt protects their soul from corruption during their stay. Salt also represents the earth, which is one of the Aztec's four elements of nature. It's usually placed in clay vessels or in the shape of a cross on the bottom level beside other elements of purification. When your loved one's visit is over, make sure they're pure for their journey back. So don't forget the salt. Just reading up on spam. Oh yeah? Pork shoulder and ham is what it's made of and it okay. was introduced in 1937. So there you go. And apparently it was very popular in World War II because it has so much salt in it, so much sodium in it, it oh, lasts a while. Yeah, so. well I remember my, my mom used to make recipes with Spam. We loved them. So there you go. So there's your Spam lesson for the day. Now and I remember my dad again. would make a Spam sandwich. Yeah, yeah, I, I've heard of it. I can't say I've ever, I've ever tried it. We I will bring should. you a can and you can it's, try it. It Fair is enough. supposedly good cold or hot. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> good to know. Spam lessons this morning. Uh, let's take a look at the tropics real quick and see what's going on there. We've got uh, one system down there in the Atlantic. It's just about to cross over into the Caribbean there. You can see that it's, it's pretty close to South America, but it's still showing some pretty good signs of development here. You see more showers and storms and outflow. So it looks pretty good as it crosses over uh, into the Caribbean. We expect that this will continue to move almost due west. That's what the latest computer models show. I don't think there is any chance of this really coming up towards the United States. This probably moves into Central America, but it could be a big problem for them. A heavy rain there uh, possibility. There's about an 80% chance of development over the next five days with this as it uh, moves west. And then we've got tropical depression number 12. Uh, this thing is limping along. I don't even know if it's going to make it another day or so. It, it looked okay yesterday. It did become a tropical depression, but now it's pretty much falling apart. So I don't think we have to worry about this one really at all. Other than that, that's all that's out there, at least in the Atlantic right now. As we go outside for you, a few clouds here and there, but that's it. We've got mostly sunny skies. Temperatures at 81 degrees and calm winds. We're not expecting much in the way of winds today. If we do see any, they'll be out of the south and east. The dew point has jumped up a little bit. It's at 56. Uh, that's still in the comfortable territory, but uh, you know, if it goes any higher than that, you will start to feel it just a little bit. 80 degrees Kerrville, 83 New Braunfels, 85 Gonzales, 88 in Pleasanton, 80 right now in Del Rio and around Bear County. We're starting to jump into the mid 80s here. We'll be up close to 90 this afternoon with all that sun out there. Uh, temperatures top out at 89 here in town, 85 Canyon Lake. We will see some 90s on the map. Right now we're forecasting 90 for New Braunfels and Gonzales. Dew point trend over the next six days. Well, those dew points, as we mentioned during the 50s, they, they try to come up a little bit, but still, I think we stay in the pleasant category. It may not be until the middle part of next week that we finally get a return of 
decent moisture. I mean, we've had a nice stretch here. It's made for those nice mornings. But if we want to get any rain back in the picture, we've got to have this number come up and we've got to have the humidity return. And I think there is a chance of that next week. The big picture here across uh, South Texas, we've got uh, some clouds developing, especially south of San Antonio, a few showers out in Mexico. But most of the action is up here across parts of West Texas, Lubbock, Amarillo, getting some much needed rain this afternoon and some pretty heavy rain in spots. And that's keeping temperatures down. You look at the number 62 right now in Amarillo, 71 Lubbock, 83 though in Wichita Falls and most of Central and East Texas still seeing those uh, warm temperatures and uh, likely we'll see some pretty hot readings later today. Quick check of our forecast. Nothing this afternoon, but we will start to see some more high clouds streaming in by tomorrow, late tomorrow, and I think by Friday we're going to see a lot more clouds. It becomes mostly cloudy Friday, and there's an outside chance for a shower or two. We'll put in a 10% chance. It's not great. If we see anything, it's going to be uh, maybe a sprinkle. Uh, chances are we don't see anything uh, because a lot of it's going to evaporate before it reaches the ground. still just so dry. Uh, 90 Thursday, 87 Friday with a 10% chance of a light shower or a sprinkle, and then 89 Saturday, 88 Sunday, and then mostly sunny to start next week. We're close to 90 yet again, guys. Thanks, Justin. Usually the Red River rivalry is two teams that are in the top 10 battling it out, crashing skulls and all this. Stuff. No, it's just <laughs> not this year. Yeah. yeah, there's just not as much hype around it, right? Because both teams are unranked for the first time since 1998 meeting in the Red River Showdown. Coming up, Coach Sarkeesian is going to offer his thoughts up. Plus, in baseball, Aaron Judge did it. He hit number 62 last night. Coming up. When the Texas Longhorns meet the Oklahoma Sooners in the Red River Showdown this Saturday, the Horns will be six and a half point favorites. That's because Texas beat West Virginia 38-20 and Oklahoma was roughed up by TCU 55-24. That leaves both teams at three and two overall, but Texas is one and one in the Big 12 and OU is 0 and two with just one Red River Showdown game under his belt. What was Steve Sarkeesian's take going into his second? What an awesome environment for college football. You know, I've been in a, I've been fortunate to have been in a lot of great games and a lot of rivalry games and never had the neutral site setting. And uh, this was uh, from the moment you start pulling into the state fair on your buses and you see both sides. Uh, that's what it's about. You know, shoot, I'm getting I'm getting goosebumps right now thinking about it. And you can see Texas take on OU live right here on KSAT 12 when kickoff happens in the Cotton Bowl this Saturday morning at 11. Last night's high school volleyball action helped the playoff picture come into focus. One of the biggest matchups featured 8 and 2 Harlan and 8 and 2 Warren going head to head in a battle for second place in District 29 6A. KSAT 12's Andrew Seeley was at the game and he breaks down Tuesday's biggest results. Harlan entered Tuesday night's matchup against Warren needing a win to maintain control on the second position in District 29 6A. <laughs> After dropping a five-set thriller to O'Connor last Friday night, the Hawks bounced back by unveiling a newfound confidence and defeating the Warriors in a fairly emphatic three-set sweep. It's the second time Harlan has swept Warren this season, giving them a tiebreaker in the district standings. It's definitely really big. I think it gives our team way more confidence, and I think we're slowly starting to come together as a team. I just think that we really have a shot at going to state and you know winning. The playoff picture is also getting clearer in District 27-5A. Burbank stayed in fourth position thanks to a 3-1 decision over Lanier. And in District 28-4A, YWLA kept a firm grip on their third spot thanks to a convincing sweep of Kennedy. The Lady Cardinals have won three straight district games and now trail undefeated Lavernia and one lost Cuero in the district standings. I feel like we play great. We're really mixing well as a team and we have really good energy this year. We have a, pretty much the same team as last year, so it's really easy to... Um, we already have that chemistry. So a huge win for the Lady Cardinals. Next up, they travel to Cuero this Friday night to take on the Gobblers. That match begins at 6.30 p.m. For KSAT 12 Sports, I'm Andrew Seeley. Thank you, Andrew. New York Yankee slugger Aaron Judge hit his 62nd homer of the season last night, a new American League record. 
passing up Roger Maris. That happened in game two of a doubleheader against the Texas Rangers in the first inning on a 1-1 slider. Now, as for the fan that jumped over the railing in hopes of getting the ball, he reportedly was not injured and he was also booted from the game. On top of that, he didn't get the ball. You can't do that? No. no. Mm -mm. So you buy it? Me buy it? Keep it? Sell it? Give it to judge. Oh, man, I don't know what I would do, honestly. I'd have to be in that position. I really don't know. Game time decision. Yes. It's worth about $2 million, they say. So, I, don't I don't have that kind of money. I don't have the Larry money. I don't have the... <laughs> you have the Osher age money? I don't have the Osher age money either. So. Oh, oh, okay. Neither do yeah. I. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, Halloween time, and that means lots of sweets, and we are not talking about the kind that go in your bag trick-or-treating. <laughs> no, these are those awesome ones from Amorous Garcia from Glamorous Cakes, and you have an entire Halloween menu, right? Yes, so we have a Halloween menu. It has two cupcake sets on there, trying to keep it simple this year. Um, orders close October 23rd, or you can order a custom cake. Um, and then we also have an interesting seasonal flavor for our Harry Potter fans out there. Ooh, Speaking of Harry Potter, yes. the colors have a significance. We'll tell you all about that coming up. All right, that's dessert. We have got something really good from La Prepa here. Family recipes straight from Mexico. Wait, you won't believe how good they <laughs> He's taste. He's just been waiting to uh -huh. do that. Okay, and Jen, of course, mm. shares a bread pudding recipe from a from an Instagrammer who has what, like a million something followers. Yeah. Then we have an extra, extra special crafter guest on today. We're gonna take some of these, you know, little plastic skeletons. Stuff from chains. the Dollar Tree. Yeah. yeah, and make a cute little Halloween fence. Very, very simple to do. Also, social question, better series. Yes, which, Hocus which? Pocus? Hocus Pocus or Harry Potter? Yeah, go ahead and start voting now at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter. All that and more. We we'll continue in a few minutes. <laughs> that is mine. Uh -huh. We just jumped up to 83 on our way to 89 this afternoon. Mostly sunny. More clouds tomorrow. A lot more clouds on Friday, but a great weekend. We'll be up near 90. It's pretty steady forecast here each and every day. Lows moderate a little bit as we get more humidity in the mornings, guys. More humidity. Just what you wanted. No, I'm asking for that. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I would ask for one of those tacos and a, and a cupcake, though. You know, they ha it's been a long time since yeah. they dropped off any food after us. Pretty good, though. SA Live starts right. Hint, hint, now. <laughs> Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Hello and happy Wednesday. I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Mike, where is Mike? Look, a magic wand. You know, I wonder if this thing, I wonder if this thing works. Let's give it a shot. Abracadabra. <laughs> it worked, it worked. <gasps> I'm drunk with power. How did you uh, do that? I don't even know, but this wand is for real. I better be careful around you nowadays. <laughs> don't, put that down, put it down. Ah. Get up. Now I'm really scared. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage, oh. and she is the sorceress. <laughs> yes, I already introduced myself. Remember, you weren't here. Okay. Our question of the day, which which series, which which, that's just fun to say, which which, it not is. the sandwich, which which series is better, Harry Potter or Hocus Pocus? Harry Potter! Harry Potter. <laughs> you got to be really into it, you know, it's more in depth. Where Hocus Pocus, you can kind of sit there and go, you know, listen, so, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll agree with you on that one. We agree on something. Yes, yes. Look at so, there, like a color of our attire <laughs> today, too. So. Yes, so let us know at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter. Start voting, and we'll see where it all shakes down a little later, a little later on. All right, our Halloween DIY week continues. Did you know desserts could decide your future? What? Yes, these cupcakes can sort out what kind of witch or wizard uh, are you? Yes, our sorceress of sweets. Amaris Garcia, owner of Glamorous Cakes, is here to show us how to create these Harry Potter-themed cupcakes. I love it! Welcome, hey, welcome! How are you? Yeah. I'm good, how are y'all? Good, so what are we making here, first of all? So, one of the two cupcakes we're gonna make is our Golden Snitch Cupcake. It's the one with the wings up there. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna grab our cupcake and our white piping bag, and we're just gonna pipe almost like a little O, starting from the inside out. Okay. And then once you have that, you're gonna take your bowl of gold sprinkles, and there's no right or wrong way to do this. You just dunk it in the sprinkles, 
And then there you have it. It's all covered in the gold. Oh, cool. And then um, once that's done, you're going to get the um, snitch wings and put them one by one on ah, the cupcake. Mm -hmm. Now, these are not edible. No, they're just cupcake toppers. I was just where, reminding no, Mike <laughs> that they are you, not edible. Where do you get little wings like this? Um, I bought them off of Amazon, but you can always get your local like craft maker to probably make some custom ones for you. Okay. Yeah. Look at that! Mm -hmm. And there's your golden snitch! Yes. Super simple and cute. Oh, okay. Okay. That's, that's really, really cute. I love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's okay, great. Okay, okay, and next... Is what? We're going to do the Harry Potter lightning bolts. Mm -hmm. So we have our maroon burgundy-ish frosting right here. And we're just going to do a simple swirl on our cupcakes. You guys have done this before. Same, same thing inside uh -huh. out, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then once you get that, you're just going to grab the lightning bolts um, in between both of y'all and just place one on the cupcake. Okay. And mm -hmm. just like that. Yes. And done. Cute. Look Super at that. simple. <laughs> and you have some special uh, Halloween flavors coming up, or right now, right? Yes, so we have our seasonal butterbeer flavor, so perfect for the Harry Potter fans. It's a vanilla cupcake filled with a butterscotch caramel, um, and then topped with it, drizzled on top of the vanilla buttercream as well. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, there <laughs> we go. Ooh, ooh there's, right. there's something inside. Ooh, that's so, this is a seasonal item, not part of the Halloween menu you've got, right? Yes, so it's just a seasonal flavor. We usually have it in October. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> that good. Your mm -hmm. butter, the buttercream on here is the most butteriest, creamiest buttercream. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. we mm. use real vegan butter, um, so it gives it a lot of flavor. And that, of course, is a theme that runs throughout all, everything you bake, right? Yes, yes. I try and use real ingredients. Um, everything's made from scratch. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have mm -hmm. our Harry Potter house cupcakes. Um, so we have them decorated according to the different houses, Ravenclaw, Slytherin, Gryffindor, and Hufflepuff. Um, but today, y'all are going to find out which house you're in, so you're just going to take a cupcake, and inside is a random filling. So, so the filling is the color that determines yes. which house you're in. What a fun game for a Halloween yeah. party Yeah, I was going to say, for all the kids, to, mm -hmm. just to, you know, make, divide up into teams or something like that. So, okay, okay. You, what are you hoping for? I'm trying to... I don't if, know. Well, if you, maybe if you picture it, you'll get the good juju, you know, this way. Okay, ready? So you, you go first. Um, well, <laughs> blue's my favorite color. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> like your eyes. <laughs> and the shirt. And, and the your gloves, shirt. So. And the gloves. <laughs> okay, now uh, just bite into it then or break yes. it open? Bite into so it. So it'll be in the center. Let's see. It'll okay. Be in the Should I just go for it? Here. Go. Well, yes. <laughs> and it is green. Oh, 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 oh you're Slytherin. <laughs> okay. Cool, um, they, uh, the definition of Slytherin are ambitious, resourceful, determined, and clever. Well, that, that does checks sum out. Me up. <laughs> okay. We're gonna be. All right. Uh, I'll pick this green one right here. Okay, here we go. Mm. Red, <laughs> you are Gryffindor. <laughs> that is courage, bravery, nerve, and chivalry. This one does work. Hey, look at that. I want a Gryffindor. Boom, got it. <laughs> you also do custom cakes, right? Yes. So we offer custom cakes um, for basically any occasion, wedding cakes as well, stuff like that. Um, if anyone is looking to order for Halloween, you can also message us. We can do basically anything. If you can picture it, we can do it. And you've been going for what, a couple of years? Yes, we're going to hit our two-year anniversary in business October 24th of this year. And how's it been going? Uh, um, it's been going great. Um, a lot of success that I didn't really foresee when I first started, so I'm really thankful. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Love Thank that. Thank you, Amorous. All right, well, don't forget to put in your Halloween orders now for Glamorous Cakes. For more information, just head to our website, essaylive.com, and click on the S scene on Essay Live tab. All right, well, as the seasons change, so does our cooking, of course. And today we get some pointers for fall recipes from cookbook author John Cannell. Well, he has over a million followers on his Instagram, hundreds of blog recipes, and his new book is out this week. Our Jen Tobias Strusky caught up with him. From school teacher to baking and cooking extraordinaire, today we're getting a sample of the recipes from Preppy Kitchen creator John Cannell's newest book. He's combining his Mexican-American culture with his Greek and French side to influence the latest recipes. So excited to be back here with John Cannell. How are you? Jen, thank you so much for having me. I'm great. <laughs> I'm so happy that you have this new book out. And let's first, let's talk about the new book. What can people find in the here? 
you're gonna find over 100 new recipes that have never been on the blog before, and the book is arranged by the season, so every recipe is a celebration of the season, of the things that you enjoy eating at that time of year with the ingredients you can get. Now, one of the recipes you are going to show us today, what are we making? This is a really delicious strata from the winter chapter. And a strata, just so you know, is basically like a delicious breakfast egg bake. So what we have here is a big bowl filled with cream, milk, a little salt and pepper. I'm adding some Italian seasonings and you could use your favorite, your favorite herbs if you'd like. Give that a whisk and we're gonna add six eggs in. Think of this as like a savory French toast casserole. The key is getting a nice crusty loaf of sourdough bread. You could use any of your favorites though. Just give it a nice cube and we're gonna add all those pieces into our custard. So this is a wonderful recipe to make because you can make it the day before ahead of time. So you can have a delicious breakfast for all of your guests or your family. You can have this for brunch. You wanna give this a nice toss and you could use your fingers right now or a spatula. And you can also add your favorite toppings to it. It's almost like a breakfast pizza where you could choose the things that you love. So here I have some cubed fresh mozzarella. It's nice and creamy. Some julienne sun-dried tomatoes. So much amazing flavor in here. And I love olives. So I have some sliced pitted green olives. But if you don't like olives, you could use mushrooms or any of your favorite things, even like some pickled peppers. And I just finished cooking off some delicious ground sausage with some onions from my garden and a little bit of olive oil. Add those right into this bowl. This is a delicious way to have everyone entertained. You just toss something into the oven, you're hanging out with everybody else, and it's already at the same time. So I love things like this or quiche that you could serve for breakfast or brunch. They're really easy and they're low stress. We're counting down right to the time where we have family and friends coming over. So easy is good, but also you'll get something that tastes amazing too, right? Yeah, and like the vibe of the book is just a celebration of every time of year. It's like the best of everything. And I made sure to include a lot of fun projects that you could do for the seasons with your kids or by yourself, as well as a lot of behind the scenes photos of everything that happens here at Hedgehill Farm. It's all mixed together, but there are some bits sticking out. Use a spatula or your hands and just press those down because anything that's kind of sticking out too much might burn in the oven and you want it to be uniformly cooked. The top should be nice and crusty, but the inside has like a lot of soft textures and it really is like a savory bread pudding or French toast casserole. Sun-dried tomatoes are such a wonderful way of just capturing that flavor of summer and using it throughout the year. This is gonna go into the oven just 350, it'll bake up until it's nice and golden. And then you're gonna be left with this. We didn't have that much time. We don't have a whole hour together. So I wanted to show you the end result. And the best way to garnish it is with a little bit of fresh basil. I took this from my garden this morning and you just pop it on right after it comes out of the oven or before serving. And it's so fragrant and wonderful. You can also julienne this if you wanna have a little little bit for everybody. For more on John Cannell, you can follow him on Instagram at Preppy Kitchen or go to his website. He shares lots of posts about his family, his farm, and of course, all his recipes. This book's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You can go to Target, into Walmart, and at a lot of your independent retailers as well. For Resi Live, I'm Jen Tobias Chesky. And dishes one, like right. No, I was gonna say dishes like that are always great on like Christmas morning, Thanksgiving stuff morning. Yeah. Yes. Pop them in the oven. I like your gloves. Thank Ready you. Ready to for, go. Okay. <laughs> for and our of course, for more information on John Cannell, you can also head to our website, essaylive.com. Click on the S on SA Live tab. All right. Okay. Still ahead on SA Live, squishy, slimy, not too scary. How you can have some fun, add some fun to Halloween with these toys, and what you need to know about the most popular ones of the season. But first, you love adding to your Halloween decorations, but don't love the cost. We're showing you how to make some spooky decor that won't break the bank. It's next on SA Live.